at the beginning, the feeling I'm stuck is a perfect entrance because nobody is stuck. It seems to be stuck. And then we can go there and look, what does it mean for you? Why do you think you're stuck? And then we are already on the level. Take a look on your beliefs. So, for example, the feeling I'm stuck. And then separate examples. Why stuck? Where? Show me. And then I'm using the words the person used for the examples, for the description. And then I get information which words are important. And then I picked up them. And we talk about this word. And I ask the person, repeat the word. How you, what, what are you feeling if you're talking about using this word or talking about to describe this? And then we go from the words to the feeling, and then we change words. And this brings already energy to the point they are important. This is Hope to Recharge. I'm Atana. I'm here to guide you and support you through your challenging times navigating through depression, anxiety, and other mental health struggles. This episode is sponsored by our incredible sponsor from the beginning, BetterHelp.com. That's BetterHelp.com, the leading online platform for therapy. Many people come to me for help, and one of my questions are, have you been to therapy? Are you willing to go to therapy? I am not a therapist. I don't claim to be a therapist and I don't do the therapist work. And I think it's something that has to be done with a therapist side by side. Some people have been to therapy for many years and then they come to me to do the work. I often say if you haven't been to therapy and if you want to start working with me, you need to start working with a therapist as well. Very often, it is very expensive. BetterHelp is a leading online platform for therapy that is affordable. You don't have to leave your house. You can get it from the comfort of your sofa, your bed, your office. It's one click away. There are thousands of licensed clinicians on this platform. It's incredible. If you want to get 10% off your first month use the link in the show notes betterhelp.com forward slash hope to recharge use the link below and start your therapy from the comfort of your home sometimes it's so overwhelming to go to therapy nowadays most therapists are on zoom most clinicians are on zoom let's say you travel a lot let's say you just don't like getting out of your house but you want a therapist it's so affordable it's worth taking a look if you're thinking about therapy and you don't know where to start go to betterhelp.com forward slash hope to recharge that's betterhelp.com forward slash hope to recharge millions of people from all over the world are using them start your wellness now Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Sorry for the big gap in between episodes. I decided to wait until my birthday, which is today, my Hebrew birthday, Yud Tammuz. I am turning 47 today, and I am so deeply grateful. And I decided that I'm going to wait with this episode that was supposed to be published a few weeks ago to publish on my birthday. And the reason why I am waiting is because this topic is one of the closest topics to my heart after gratitude. This episode, we're going to speak about the power of words, how our words and our thoughts transform our mind. If you are new here, you're going to learn about my passion with words. And if you're not new here, you know how passionate I am about the words and our thoughts and how we can use it to create a better well-being, how we have to be more conscious of it. Back in March, when I was traveling for Tal Ben Shahar's retreat in Italy, I came across this lovely lady, Giselle Van Lux. Giselle is a brain acrobat and a word fairy. We met on a boat. I'm going to share a little bit further on how we met and how our energies collided. When I started speaking to her, I knew that I needed to bring her on because I wanted to learn more about the power of words and more about how I can use my words to elevate my life. I'm going to also publish an article that I wrote about the power of words and why words mean so much to me a link in the show notes of the blog, the article that I wrote about it. It's something that I open up about a challenge that I had in my life that I don't think I shared before. Link below. So I'm excited to share this conversation on my birthday because I want to elevate. I want to start my new year with new level of awareness 
of my words. After I spoke to Giselle, she's a consciousness coach. She works with people helping them align their energy to their desires, expanding their mind. Her world is full of energy. She can see and feel energy. She sees through things. She sees the source beyond forms. It's a gift that she got from birth. And now I am gifting this conversation with you. Before we start this episode, I want to ask you for one favor, a birthday gift. I'm asking you for a birthday gift. If you are listening to this episode and you haven't followed us either on iTunes or Spotify, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to take it to the next level of a birthday gift, leave a comment or review about our podcast. The more reviews, the more comments we get, the more we get seen and the more we go up in the rankings and we can be expanding hope to recharge more and more. That little like, that little follow, that little share goes very far for us. If you want to say happy birthday to me, this is the way. Now enjoy this episode. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me here today. I have my new friend that I met in Italy when I was on Tal Ben Shachar's Happiness Study Academy retreat. I went with Ari in March and Ari and I would take little outings in the afternoon. And one afternoon we decided that we're going to go see Lake Como. And in Lake Como, they're like little islands. And we mapped out which islands we want to see. Now, when I say little, they're really little. You can walk around them within a day, within three hours or two hours and finish the island. They're exquisite. And the way you get from island to island is by a short boat, like a seven to 12, 15 minute ride. And we mapped out the three islands we want to see that day. And we were going from island to island. We get to the third island, and I don't even remember what which one it was. And we get off the boat, and we're like, okay, we're not feeling it. We're just not feeling it. It's beautiful and everything. Let's just go back to the other island. Let's look to see when the next boat is. And there's no major technology in Lake Como, Italy. You will have to go to a booth where there's a sweet lady that sits there. And he asked when the next boat is to the island. It was like a few minutes away. The boat came, we get on the boat, and then we get off the boat. It was like maybe a seven-minute ride. And we go to the booth to find out when the next boat is going to the next island where our car is. And there's no woman at the booth. And there's no e-tickets. And there's no electronic booth that you can buy the tickets. And I'm like, oh, Ari just don't want to miss this next boat because then we're going to miss sunset. And I had a whole plan for sunset. We walk around the booth and there's this sweet couple like just standing there. And I see my new friend Giselle smiling and I'm attracted to smiles. And I don't know what it was, but I went over. I don't know why I even asked. And I said, do you know when the next boat is to this and this island that I don't remember the name. And do you know where the lady is from the booth? And Giselle, my new friend that I'm going to be speaking to now, said to me, yeah, it's going to be in blah, 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 blah. And we're going there. We said that we're from New York. And what are we doing here? And Ari said, my wife is on the Happiness Study Academy retreat. Right away, Giselle says, what did you just say? And most people don't ask unless they're in the consciousness of awareness, of growth, of understanding next, of inner work. I call it inner work, that it's constantly living with the vibrations of the now. And self-help is something that they're excited about. So I was like, wow, somebody in Italy is asking me about that Happiness Study Academy. And I was so excited to share. And she actually asked me, can I write it down? Like she was curious. And And then I said, why are you so curious? She shared with me that this is what she does in life. She helps people with their words, with their energy, with their vibration. And we started talking. The ride was not too long on the boat. And then we gave each other our WhatsApp numbers and we became friends. And I said, okay, I need to bring you on the podcast because what you do is just remarkable. Anybody that listens to my podcast knows that I believe in energy. I believe in the law of attraction. I believe in mindfulness. I believe in words. I believe that we attract what we think and we start talking what we think. And our people that are surrounding us are very connected to our thoughts and our words. And we start noticing it and we live with consciousness with our words, with our thoughts. 
we transform our lives. And Giselle is not nodding. So now I gave you a whole background on how I met Giselle and why I'm fascinated with what she does, because I believe in this. And a lot of my recovery came from choosing my thoughts, choosing my words, living with alignments with my core value. So first of all, I'm going to welcome you. Thank you for joining us on the show. Thank you so much. It's a really great pleasure for me to be here. I think the biggest point that I want to touch upon here is how our energy connected at that station. There was something that connected our energy and nothing is random. Nothing is coincidence. Just I'm going to bring you in here. I'm going to, I want you to elaborate on that and give us a little bit of a background on how you came into energy. And then we're going to talk about what energy means to you, what consciousness means to you, what living with our awareness and how you can like really bring it into your life with choosing your words and what power does words have? And can we really create our future with our words? Can we change things in our lives with our words? So give us a little bit of a background on you. Yes. First of all, the answer of your last question is yes, you can change your life with words. <laughs> this is also the beginning for me. As a child, I recognize that words are talking to me. They show me the, you can say, your the personality. And the truth is it's the energy in words. I can feel them. I can see them. I receive information on this level. And this is always, <laughs> for me, it's normal. And at the beginning, I thought this is meant by the saying, you have to read between the lines. If I listen to somebody or read a text, then I get the information and I thought, oh, that's it. Okay. And later on, I recognized this is something special. Not everyone gets all this information I receive by words. So this is my uniqueness. Gift. Gift. Yes, you can say it's a gift. Yes, of your course. Gift and your, the talent that you were gifted with when you were born. Yes. And at what age did you recognize that not everyone has the read between the lines, the energy that they're receiving, that your frequencies are really tapped into words? I, I have been already at school, so maybe seven or eight years was the beginning of it because it was connected with reading. Then it's getting more intense by reading words. Then I get some information about the person who wrote this text or maybe about the situation, the, what is described. So then I recognize, ah, this is really a lot of information that I can get from the words. Mm. And did you recognize that it was such a talent and a gift that people might think that you're strange and what she's talking like that people won't accept you with what you're saying they might think like okay she's talking nonsense I don't know what she's saying were you afraid to talk about this talent a long time I not really talking about it it was for me and I'm enjoying it and then later on I tried to talk about and then as I started to use the word energy some people like it some not and then I be careful to use the words, the, especially the word of energy, talking about energies and also about the information I got on this level. And many years later, I get in contact with a woman and she is talking about energy. And I was so in touch with her. And then I started to think about it, to learn about it. And she teached me as well. Mm. That was the beginning of doing something with words and the energy. So basically, you didn't feel alone and you found someone that you can share your passion and your gifts with. And you started thriving and you're like, oh, there's something we could do with this. It's not just something that I'm receiving. I can actually put it to work and finding like the small community because it was just another woman at the time that you just felt like alive probably you're like oh wow somebody gets me I'm not alone I could speak to somebody on the our same language and they don't think that I'm crazy 
the same language is a perfect wording for this. And as well, oh, a lot of moments are like this. Ah, that's what I receive. Now I got it. Now I understand it because in the beginning, I don't think so much about it. And then I learned about it and I learned also to use it and to work with it. Mm. So when you say you learn to use it, is it when you meet a new person, you feel their energy and their vibration? And we're going to go into what that means, the vibration, their frequencies. Do you use it in order to understand who the person is when you first meet a person? Yes, it's a kind of orientation. I can see where a person is, like a position. And from the position, the person have a perspective. And the perspective determines the frequency. For me, it's like a, a reading. It's like a GPS. Yes. <laughs> yes. The destination yes. of knowing who they are. So you just go step by step until you reach home, which is who they are. And it's fast by you. It's Yeah, it's very fast. And the fascinating thing is it includes consciousness level and unconsciousness or subconsciousness level as well. So it's really a wisdom. For you or for the person or both? For me, because I can get all informations about on the energy level. And for everybody, is it possible? Okay, so let's break it down for people that are beginners in the energy and the holistic world. I call it the more spiritual holistic world because we live in such a fast pace. It takes a lot of pausing in order to tap into these energies and to even the awareness of it. The awareness is the beginning. It starts with the awareness. So let's break it down and let's go through the terminology. I'm going to ask you what energy means to you, what consciousness means to you, what frequency means to you, and vibration. Okay? If it's like a pyramid, one is on top of the other, break it down. But that's basically, I want to give the terminology because then once the audience has the terminology, a lot of the audience knows the terminology and a lot of People heard the terminology, they're not exactly sure what it is, and some people are new to it. So let's start from the beginning. So energy for me is the end, the essence of everything. Everything has an energy, a body, a thing, material things, more subtle things. There's energy in everything. And I'm using the word energy similar to light and love. Or some people use universe the source or God. So for me, this is all the same. You find the sparkle or the energy in everything. And the frequency is, for me, your energy sending out to the universe. Frequency, for me, means you have your frequency and this is changing all the time and you can work with it. And every frequency which is above your frequency you can also receive, but you don't receive no, in a normal state frequencies on a higher level, though you have to rise up your frequency to receive it. That's also the fine tuning. The fine tuning, you are using the radio and then you put your frequency to the frequency of the sender and then you receive it. Wow. So. Let's say there's no sound. I, I want to understand this a little bit better. So we wake up every morning and we're, in a, we're on a frequency, right? How do we know where our frequency is and if we need to fine tune ourselves to receive messages or anything or vibrations or energy in order to receive anything, whatever we're asking for people for whatever we are, we want to connect to. In order to receive, we need to be on the right frequency. So how do we know what frequency we're on and if we need to go up or down and how to align? First of all, you have to feel your inner being. So if you, this may be important for our talk, I would like to invite you to feel your body during we are talking, during you are listening, because then you got sensations in your physical body. And as well, if you're open to it, to your subtle bodies. And this is already the first connection to energy because it is an uplifting, a nice energy or not so 
nourishing, maybe tricky, challenging. So you can say it's a little bit like thumb up or thumb down. And at the beginning, this is perfect. Just feel your body all the time, if it's possible. Awareness. The first step is awareness. Just notice. Yes. Just notice, just observe, nothing to do. And this is the first level of how is my energy in this moment? Up, some down. Then you decide if it's fine, just let it go. If it's not so fine, then you can work with your energy and do things to uplift your energy, to uplift your frequency. And that's what you talked about before. It's thoughts, it's mindfulness, it's awareness, self-caring. All these things are uplifting tools, you can say. When I first started understanding frequency, and I'm going to elaborate how frequency came into my life later on, we'll talk about it. But when I went to my one of my first healers and they were like, oh, you're on a high frequency. What is a frequency? It's like tuning in the radio. Sometimes it's staticky. Sometimes it's not of whoever remembers the radio time. But you had to get, if you were far away, you didn't get the radio station as well. But when you tuned it, you were able to hear it clearly. And if you're going out of the zone of that radio station, I know there's some that are better in New York or out of like in that area, the frequency, it's going to get staticky. So you're not receiving it as well. So he explained it to me. It's like a radio wave. That's a good example. Yes. So what if somebody is on a very high energy, on a high frequency, and they want to connect with somebody that's not nearly as high? Do they have to come down to them? If they, if the other person should understand them, yes, that's the way. That's the only way. You have to be on the same level. And if one important point, this happens all the time because energy is always exchanged, changing the, the movement. And if two persons come together, the energy, they will mix. They collide. Yes, a lot. Yeah. Yes. So it means lower level and higher level, they will meet in the middle. So the person with the higher frequency nourish the other person or other persons. That's so. so it naturally happens if you're mindful about it. You can share your energy with somebody else if you're mindful about it? No, it will happen always. You don't have to be aware. Naturally. It's naturally. It will happen if you are consciousness about or not. But if you are conscious about it, you can care about your personal energy system. And then if you are the person with the higher energy, you are not get depleted. <laughs> yes. So this is the important point. If using the energies in daily life to keep your high vibration level in every situation. It reminds me of a conversation that I had with a different healer. I want to say I met her. She's an Israeli healer. I met her years ago when I was pregnant with Kate. So it was, she's nine now, so about 10 years ago. I didn't know that I had early ovarian failure at the time. I was changing my whole mindset into energy healers versus traditional therapy. Like I saw that it was working for me. I was able to get off of my medication with energy healers, with my mind, with versus increase my medications. And I really was, I was blessed. And when I was, I found out that I was, that I, it was before I found out that I had early ovarian failure and I was having a lot of miscarriages. So I was working with her to find out why is my body rejecting all these pregnancies. And then when I got pregnant, I was working with her twice a week to keep my energy positive and to keep it afloat until I gave birth. And then when I give birth, I don't go into this deep depression of my fears of going back into postpartum depression or whatever it was. And I remember there was such a fear in me of going back to depression. I flew to Israel. It was seven or eight weeks before I gave birth to meet her face by face because I never met her. We always did it by phone. And she always said, don't worry. I can send you my energy. You don't even have to be on the phone. I could send you my energy. And I'm like, okay, fine. So she would 
do her an adjustment and we would work. And I really felt a difference. I remember coming and meeting her because I wanted to do intense work for the baby. And we felt like it would be much higher vibration if I'm there. I prepare the baby and prepare myself for birth. And I remember sitting there and I couldn't understand how she sat, I think, with nine clients a day that everybody's sharing so much pain and she's still on a higher vibration. And she was to have this thing that she swiped to clean her vibration from her hand, like this cleansing thing. And she said, one day you're going to learn about how to protect your energy. And I, it was, I was in such a raw and vulnerable place that everything negative was sticking to me. And I was disconnecting. I was working on disconnecting from energies in order to work on my vibration. And she said one day, and I couldn't fathom, I couldn't fathom the thought of sitting and listening to other people's pain because it was just, I was too raw. My energy was stripped naked to the bare bones that I couldn't tolerate. Now people ask me, and I won't forget her answer. She said, one day you're going to learn. And now people ask me, how do you listen to so much pain and still keep your positive energy, your positive mind? And I said, it's constant work to keep my vibration high. It's constant work of mindfulness, of meditation, of my silence, of protecting myself, of breathing, of real breathing, of disconnecting from the negative energy that I feel in the world or from people in order to hold space for this and not get affected. Now, do I sometimes feel a little low? Yes, but I know very well how to balance myself back. Yeah, that's it. That's all about it, yes. And you do it in every moment. It's not done once and then you're... <laughs> one and done. It's constant. One and done. No, it's constant. It's like driving a car, your both hands. On the wheel. Yeah, on the wheel and then a little bit left, more left. Up. So it's, it's an ongoing process. Yeah. So you explain frequency. What's consciousness awareness? Awareness means to be open to the sensations you can receive. And at the same time, to take responsibility about your thoughts, your words, your doing. And so it's the word awareness is very similar to consciousness at the beginning. And then take responsibility about your energy it is at the same time so it's words doing then it will lift up your consciousness because you're getting wider or deeper or higher this is a kind of growth and then so i would use awareness a little bit more for the tools and consciousness is the level of your being and your consciousness will rise up. Would you say that consciousness could be your clarity? Yes, yes. If, yes, and much more. Consciousness is the highest word you can use in this context, I would say. So you're basically getting clarity with all your sensations. You're feeling your inner, your outer, your smell, your touch, your eyes. Your So basically you're fine-tuning everything to receive all the information. And that's consciousness. And so we say high consciousness or low consciousness is how foggy are your senses to receive all these things? Or how clear are they? Yes. To clear your senses is very important. All of them. And then if you're doing this, you will learn to, because there are thoughts, and I call them impulses or informations from a higher level. And to clear your sense, senses and your emotions, it's very important to get a receptive mode for impulses or informations from a higher level. That are there already. Or are they can these messages are you saying higher level? Are they part of nature or you're receiving it from somewhere? You can say they will come from the source or so, yes. So source, God, energy, whatever, whatever the person calls it. So basically it's on demand. You're asking and you're receiving. Yes. And I say everybody can reach this point if they do the exercises of clearing their energy, being mindful, awareness, all these practices of 
cleaning our pipelines. It's pipelines. I always visualize it in the morning when I do my meditation. I visualize a pipeline coming to my head, the top of the skull right here, going all the way to the sky. Now, we believe, I believe in God. We believe in one source that everything's coming from God. So I believe and we believe that he sits on a throne and you just see this glow of light. And all I'm seeing is every morning when I do my gratitude meditation, I see abundance of love coming, pouring down into the skull of my head, down through my body, into the core of the universe. So basically, I'm just the pipeline all the way from the sky, the deepest, deepest part of the sky in heaven where God sits all the way into the core, core, the little, little part of the universe. And I'm just the pipeline. In between, and I just see the abundance of light coming through. Oh, you see this thing behind me? Yes. This is my morning meditation. And this is what it's like. So I'm the middle. Yes. And the energy is going, coming through me, like from God into me. And that's what I feel. Like it's literally a straight. And that's what I visualize every morning, by the way. Okay. Okay, and the light comes from heaven, and I just feel like I'm a vessel to receive, and God wants to give me only good. And I'm opening the channel. I'm clearing it from all the stuff that happened either the day before, the morning of, whatever it is, the second before, a minute before, a year before. I'm clearing the pipeline to be able to receive without any plugs in the way and stuffage in a way to just clear the way. That's it. And honestly, for me, it's a long time I'm using the word receiving or becoming also. And now it's maybe it's more be consciousness about it's already. So it's not really a becoming. Oh, you feel like it is already. Yes. yes. Feeling has to be of I am the feeling. That's why you overflow. When you're inviting something, you're feeling as if you have it already. And that's why I feel that whenever I visualize this, no matter what happens a second later, I'm feeling abundance of joy. It's overflowing. My heart is overflowing with gratitude, no matter what. It's an abundance. And I see it. I say it's like the Niagara Falls of gratitude. Just my heart is overflowing. And that's what I visualize. I visualize Niagara Falls coming out of my body of gratitude just because I'm visualizing this and I'm counting my blessings. That's perfect. Energetic works. Congratulations. (laughs) So you started working with energy. You started learning more about energy, how to tap into the right energy, how to be in the right consciousness to, to balance your consciousness and your tweaking of your vibration your vibration and to see, can you sometimes say, okay, I'm feeling off. I need to balance my energy right now. I need silence. I need to meditate. I need to, and you don't know what it is that's taking you off balance or you do know. Both. Sometimes I know, know it, sometimes not. For me, it's not necessary to know it because I feel it and then I balance or clean my energy. And this is a kind of mental work or mental decision and I can do it in one second, just by decided now, clean all my bodies, all my levels right now. Yeah. And then it's, it's already done. <laughs> yeah. I once heard of somebody doing like this. Yeah. They literally like a, a board or, okay, clean. And just that movement and they tapping into it, it just cleans the energy, the mindfulness of it. And sometimes just the action is possible immediately to feel it yeah so i want to give the audience a little bit of a a taste of you so give me a story personal story from your life not from a client yet from your life how words had a trend that's something that you realized oh i need to use words differently in order to achieve something or to attract something that happened something that you can say manifest or something that you desired were working towards. And when you use the words, you notice the difference of the shift in the words. You chose certain words and the shift that made that happen. I have one example in my mind. I was looking for a new flat 
and I found one, but I got the feeling ah, it's really a nice one, but it's not perfect. And it was a situation I was a little bit under pressure because I need a flat in the next few days. So I'm, I'm not sure, should I go for the one to be sure to have one? Or should I believe in a better one in just a few days? And then I do my inner work and I got the answer, go for the perfect flat. And then I sit down and focused on all the flats I have had already. And got a feeling, oh, this was nice. Maybe the kitchen was nice. Or in this one, the bathroom was perfect. Or in this one, I like the balcony. And then it's like a puzzle. I pick and mix. So I put it together. And then I also thought about the address. So what street would be great? And then I thought, what is the zip code of this place? And then I checked it in the internet. And I saw, oh, these are the numbers of the place I want to be. How did you know? It was in Berlin, and I know this place, and it's a bit. I want to be. That was your dream. If you can pick a key from anywhere, and they said you can have anything, that's where you wanted. Yeah, that's it. And then I feel now it's completed. And then I was really in this, in this. And this was just all in all, only. My thoughts. I use words and pictures and put it together. And really, on the next day, I found my new flat. So, how did you use the words when you said that? When you say I use the words, where did you use the words? So, in this case, I observed my thoughts about the flat I want and the flat I flats I already lived in. And, for example. If a thought is coming up, oh, maybe it's difficult to get a nice flat in this place with balcony. And the balcony is a nice one. It's silent. It's not so close to another neighbor or so. Then I'd be aware of this and say, oh, stop. Is this something I want to have? No. So stop it. Stop thinking about it. So you were saying all the doubts and limitations that you were putting on the possibility, you stopped it when they were coming. So you said, oh, Berlin might not have a place with a nice balcony that's not cluttered. You're like, but maybe they could. Yes, yes. And then that's the, and because of my connection to the world, if something happened like this, I had a, a not so positive thought, then another level of awareness give me a sign and a little hey what are you doing and then I oh okay thanks stop it (laughs) and then choose another one choose a really helpful word or picture so you're saying the words are basically in the mind the conversations we're having with ourselves so it doesn't have to be physical the physical word when we bring it out it's a higher energy higher vibration because we're no, no, <laughs> no, no. It's, that's if words just in thoughts, they are on a higher level because they are more subtle. If a word is a it's spoken, so it's an expression into the world. So it's more physical. It's a shape more because another person can hear it. Maybe you write it down. Another so. It's more like a... It's intensified. No, it isn't it, right? No, maybe more like a... More physical. More physical. And everything physical is on a low vibration because it's from the subtle version down to the physical level. And it's a slow vibration. And a subtle level is a higher vibration. Wow. That's important. Wait, wow. Because I thought the opposite. Because I don't know, from what I was learning about energy and words, words have a much stronger power 
in our, they have a much stronger power than a thought. Because once you release the word, it's already doing its magic, either to destroy or to build in the world. The word itself has an, a force that's stronger than our thoughts. That's why they say words can break or build. Yes, thoughts can do this as well. So it's already a kind of manifestation. It's like a birth. It's already a birth into the world. So it's a byproduct of a thought. It's more advanced. It's more advanced than a thought. If somebody wants to manifest something, okay, let's say they want to manifest something, and they're keeping it only in their mind, if they take it into words, powerful words that are mindful and designed, won't it bring more energy into the manifestation? Yes. And it's not only it don't bring more power in the manifestation, it's already the beginning, the physical starting of manifestation. It's the birth. It's already in the canal. Yes. Yes. Wow. I love that. I love that. But you're saying the mind, the thought is a higher frequency than a word. Yes. From, yes. That's it. Because it's unphysical, you can say. It's subtle. And for me, it's important of thought. We have to maybe separate informations or impulses and thoughts because thoughts are for a lot of people they are um, very identified with their thoughts or is it with their feeling their thoughts come from feelings it's both normally it starts with a thought or an energy an income and an energy you get in contact and then you have, you have two options you feel what what's to feel or you start feeling and you jump into thinking and then you have two two layers you have the original feeling and thinking about your feeling so this thoughts about your feelings we can separate it it's we can talk one hour about this thing right choosing me right here and to with be with your feelings and then we really talk about impulses or informations because we are not on the normal so-called normal thinking level mm -hmm. and from this you also have thoughts a kind of thoughts they look similar but if you focus on the energy they have a complete different quality so you never mix them you will Check that, oh, this is an impulse and an information, and this is a thought. They are completely different. And the real power is in the informations and the impulse. When you say you work with words, it's really the words you talk to yourself in your mind, not so much the powerful words that you bring out to the world, the physical world. It's both. Both. But it starts in the mind. The more you, your work that you're doing with yourself to perfect yourself constantly and to work with clients is starting off the words that we tell ourselves. Yes. And then make sure that those good words are coming out to the universe, not because once they're out, it's already a manifestation. So you already gave birth to either the positive or the negative of the thought. So it starts with the thought. That's why they say the most important conversations that you'll have will be the ones that you have with yourself. Because <laughs> so make sure that these conversations that you have in your mind are made out of the positive words and uh, the mindful words and the what you really want to attract into your life. Okay, now I understand. Now I'm understanding a little bit in depth when you say a word. So... When somebody comes to you, for an example, and they share with you for, I'll take a little bit of an extreme. Let's say they share with you that they were just diagnosed with something terrible, maybe even a deathly disease, okay? And they want to heal from that. I have no experience in this cases. Normally, I get in contact with persons, they have a desire to change their life. So 
maybe they have some wishes already or maybe they have just a feeling they want to change something but no idea what it could be and this is the level I guided people so we can talk about these things because I have no so that so basically you're saying there's different entry levels into our energy and the more we work on it the more we can basically transform our lives but it's but it has to be in the micro steps and it's easier to change something that we want already so a desire for something to transform versus to get rid of a disease that's already in our body mm -hmm. but it's possible as well but i didn't have any client right of that for example somebody is coming and saying i want a new job yes I've been in the same career for 30 years. I'm not connecting to it. I'm doing it like a robot. I'm feeling very depleted. I want to change and I'm stuck and I don't even know how to start. And probably there's fear, anxiety, the unknown. How would you walk them through that? At the beginning, the feeling I'm stuck is a perfect entrance because nobody is stuck. It seems to be stuck. And then we can go there and look, what does it mean for you? Why do you think you're stuck? And then we are already on the level, take a look on your beliefs. So for example, the feeling I'm stuck and then separate examples. Why stuck? Where? Show me. And then I'm using the words, the person used for the examples, for the description. And then I get information which words are important. And then I picked up them and we talk about this word. And I asked the person, repeat the word. How you, what, what are you feeling if you're talking about using this word or talking about to describe this? And then we go from the words to the feeling, and then we change words. And this brings already energy to the points they are important. And you create sentences that they repeat in their mind, and they constantly repeat it, even if they don't believe in it. Uh, what I often hear from people is these affirmations and stuff like that. They're like, but I don't believe in that. So do you believe that somebody should say things even if they don't believe in the words just like we check it. First of all, it's not really, in my kind of work, it's not really necessary to repeat it all the time. It's also possible we worked on it and it's done. You are on the next level and you don't have to care about this. So it's not like daily practice necessarily. And then they don't fall back down. So let's say you cleared it. Does it come back in the way? It's cleared forever? Yes, it's, that's possible. If the person decided to fall down, that's possible as well. So it's, but it's the work. It works so well. Can be done in one in some seconds or some minutes or maybe one hour. It's possible. And their past beliefs doesn't affect it in the future. Yes, because if the work is includes the subconsciousness, and if we clean the subconsciousness. You will not be fall back because there's no resonance anymore. You feel back normally because you make a decision by consciousness, by awareness, but your subconscious is not aligned, is not in harmony with it. So it's working against your consciousness affirmation, for example. And then you there's pros, that's like an insight. And if you clean the subconsciousness and subconsciousness and consciousness is on one level, it's in harmony with your wish, for example, you can't fall back because there's no more really resonance for the blockhead. It's like a root canal. You take out the root, so there's nothing there. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wow. Wow. That's so powerful. Yeah, that's very powerful and it's very, it's really easy and it's really fast and really powerful. 
I love it. It's really amazing. Wow. Do you not use it to manifest constantly? Do you use the word manifest in your life or not? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'm using it's a kind of manifestation, yes. Yeah. And yes, I'm really aware of every word I use, especially if somebody has, for example, birthday and I send a birthday message. I so often get the answer, what a wonderful message. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, because I'm aware of it. And every word I'm using is a magic word. Every sentence is a magic spell. I'm aware of this and I care for this. Wow. Oh, yes. Wow. <laughs> this so is you... my, da my daily life. Yeah. So you tap into the words. You You basically... You architect a, a sentence or sentences for the person based on where they're holding and where they need to go to the next level, next level in order to get to their goal. Yeah, that's it. Wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay. I want to take an example. I want to take an example and see how we can share it. Let me think of something. Okay. So there's this project that I've been dreaming of. Mm -hmm. I call it a it's I called it a project now just because uh, one of my mentors that I'm going to be working with to complete this project calls it the project. But many years ago, I was thinking about designing a bag that's easy for shopping. I get anxiety from shopping. I don't I try to avoid stores. I get people's energy when I go into a store. It depletes me very fast. So I just avoid I avoid shopping. And I'm so grateful for all the online apps that I hardly need to go into a store. But if I do need to go into the store, so I have these bags that I designed that are very cool. They fold and they open. You can leave a bunch of them in your car. And also if, if now in New York, you have to start paying for bags. It just sits in your trunk so beautifully and you can put the right amount and nothing falls out of it. And it's like a box that com that, that folds and it's perfect. And I was thinking of designing like different inspirational sayings that are very close to my heart on them. A lot of them will be with gratitude. I started designing it years ago. I was inspired from some from a different bag that I was using. And I'm like, okay, how can we perfect it? And then fear came into place. How am I going to manufacture it? How am I going to have time? What if I'm not going to find the right material what if it fails what if I spend so much money and it's not going to go and what if I'm not a good salesperson all of these negative thoughts and I stopped it and it keeps on coming back into my mind and like and I'm visualizing it, everybody using it and then my doubts come into place I'm like you don't have the time you're so busy with a million other things why are you even doing this and Sarah Blakely She's the designer and the CEO of Spanx. She's very into choose your thoughts. And she said, if something comes into your mind two or three times, revisits you, it's your calling. Just go do it. If you have a dream, just it, mean, it means if it's coming and knocking on your door, don't keep on slamming, do it. And I keep on hearing her voice saying, try it, try it. So my mentor is now doing a project, like within 101 days, a bunch of people that want to finish a project are coming together, accountability, and we're going to finish this project. I have so much fear and resistance, and I know it's all negative energy. I know it's not good for me. And then I bring back my thoughts, Matana, of course you can do it. What's the big deal? If people can figure out how to go to the moon, you can do a bag, like you can manufacture a bag. It's not a big deal. All my doubts come. So that's where I'm holding. I want to come in with a clear awareness and without these doubts in my mind, without the roadblocks, without minimizing how it will be okay or not okay. The doubts are not a problem. So they will come up maybe often, maybe sudden, but they are there. It was interesting. You talk about your idea, the project. And then you talked about your fears. And have you feel the power in the fears? You're talking about the much more passionate. Yes. Because yeah. yes. they are louder. My fears are very loud. Okay. Okay. And tell me one more, pick up one fear, one special fear. I'm debating two different words. 
I'm debating if it's stuck or fail. Two of the words are coming up, stuck or fail. Stuck that I'll get to a certain point and then I'm going to be tapped out and I won't know how to go from there. Or fail means like I'm going to get through all the motions. It's not going to produce like I wanted it and it's not going to be a, either it's not going to be a good bag or people are not going to like it or I won't be able to sell it or it's going to be a failure. Okay. First of all, every sentence you just said, they need your power. If you don't nourish them, they will disappear. No matter what your sentence, your fears about it, the topic doesn't matter. It's your belief that open it. You can understand what I'm meaning. If the fear you don't sell any bag. It's like it's just a sentence. It can pass by. But if you believe, oh, maybe I don't sell anyone, <gasps> then it works. How do we get rid of the belief? If it's in your heart, how do you get rid of it? It's not in you. It comes up. And you decide it, if you listen to it or not, if you believe it or not. So you notice it, you notice it and you're like, oh, hi, fear, you came to visit. You can leave now. And it's, you take care of your inner sensations. It comes up and if you, sometimes maybe you don't get an inner sensation, no resonance, but you are just used to it, to listen to thoughts. It's not necessary to listen to them. So if they come up, Feel your inner sensations. Say, use, use another sentence. Just pick one up and say it again and feel your inner body. And a positive or a negative? Something that I want to get rid of or not? Which one? It's your decision. Pick another sentence to, to notice? Maybe pick, yes. Maybe pick up a fear. One of your thoughts about what could happen. Negative. Oh, a fear? Another fear? If this doesn't work out, I'll be afraid to try many other of my dreams. <gasps> wow, no, it's good. It's getting more bigger than your bag, huh? Yeah, yeah. The bag is this. I have a thousand dreams. Yes. A thousand, and I want to accomplish them all. But when you work so hard on something and it doesn't work out, yes, you know everything is for the good, but you're exhausted and you're like, okay, maybe it's not worth it the energy that I'm going to put into it. Maybe it's not worth the success, quote unquote. And I'm like, okay, let me just live a happy, calm life without trying. And here we are in a very interesting point. Then at the same time, it could work out. And what if it will work out? So you have to accept everything, every single wish could work out. Can you hold this? Oh, yeah. Totally. I live really? there in my mind all the time. I live in my dreams, in my joy of my dreams. I live there. I hover there. I hang out there. That's where my gratitude is because I give gratitude to whatever doesn't, like for my dreams, as if it happened already. So if that's it's not a problem for you, why you... Don't keep on going to design your bag. Oh, so I'm going to start this project tomorrow, actually. And I have 111 days until it has to be finished. Because now I have accountabilities. Now I have somebody that I have to show. It's not me against me. It's me against others that will push me forward step by step. So what is your, just your question right now? How do I get unstuck from these fears? I'm still afraid. Even though I'm going to have these people, I'm still afraid. You don't have to be unstuck. If you decided, I take a look at every single fear and I observe my inner sensations, this fear, thumb up, thumb down. Is it really a fear that's important for me that I should care about it? You can ask this, and then you get an inner, an inner answer, and the energy would be thumb up. Then it's important for you. You should follow this 
in, in, intuition. Oh, this. you should. Yes. But what if you're not sure? <laughs> then you have to change your question. So take another example. Okay, this is going to be a big one. We have a house and there's this burning desire to do something good with the house. Mm -hmm. And my dream is to have healing retreats or bringing couples together that need a break from a child that's special needs or sick or they need a break to recharge. My podcast is Hope to Recharge. I believe in recharging. We have to recharge ourselves so often. And sometimes people just need to disconnect in order to recharge. I want them to be able to go to my home in order to recharge. There's butterflies in the backyard. When I go there, my heart relaxes. I just have to go out to my backyard and it's quiet and it's just beautiful. I want to gift this to the world. And at the same time, I'm afraid. Is it the right thing? Am I going to get into problems with the neighbors, with the community? Am I sharing too much of my own self with the world? Am I giving too much? Time out. Yes, you can, you can, we can also stop at this because they're coming up so many different fears. Doubts, fears, roadblocks. At the same time, my burning desire, I want to do good with this house. Then you should ask, what can I do? And then you don't take care about the fears. Yes, they will come up. But if you focus on the fears, it doesn't help really. And it's like a big soup, all fears in one big pot. And then it, that is really difficult to separate and to get an answer because they are, it's too complex. So it's re really important to pick up one and take a look of one fear. Is it important? Could it be an, a real point or is it just fictive? But your fears can be also 100% if you put your power on it. Right. Yeah. So therefore, focus on the things you want to do. And if the fears are coming up, really take a single fear. Care about this. Check it if it's really important or not. And not, don't listen to all the fears at the same time, because this is really huge mixed soup and you have no chance to get an answer of it. So you do process of elimination one at a time. Yes. It's a little bit like Cinderella work, I call it. Good and bad ones. And you focus on the good ones. And then if sometimes you pick up or if they came up, just take care of one fear. And ask yourself, is it really an important point? And is it just a sort of maybe and what will happen then? Or is it a kind of information I get? Hey, care about this point. Then you have to maybe contact some person, read some things or this. Then you are working on this information. Maybe is it allowed? Or what's about the neighbors you just talk? So what about the tech neighbors? Then take which neighbor? This is a nice neighbor, I think. No problem. Maybe it's only one neighbor, not the neighbors. So then you can take care of this one neighbor. Is it really important or is it just maybe? So you split it in small pieces and then you get an answer for each question, not for the whole. You can get answers for the whole as well, but this is much more difficult. So at the beginning, be very on this point. So how is it different with what you wanted for your flat versus what I want for my house? You requested the flat and I have a request for my home. How is it different? Yes. My focus don't get to the bad things, to the things that could be worse. I just pick and mix the best of everything. And is that enough? Is that blindfolding? Is that enough to, can I focus only on the positive that will come out and ignore everything else and just go with it? I wouldn't use the word ignore because if something came up and it's a really to do, I will care about it. For example, do I need a special permission 
to use the house for this. Then I don't ignore it, but I don't think about what could be maybe happen with if I use the house for little because of the neighbors. Don't give energy to this. Why? If it's not really a problem you have to care about, it's just background noise. Yes. And that's is really that's the fine tuning. So if you dream about your house and then the noisy thoughts or the monkey mind, I like the monkey mind, then you say, stop it. And you can ignore your monkey mind because this needs no, don't need your energy. It absorbs your energy. And you're not working on your focus, on your dream. Your energy is absorbed from the monkey mind, the noisy sort. And this is the point and the difference, my flat or in your house, if the noisy thoughts came up, I pull it away. So basically you ask yourself what, that you ask the question, what do you want an answer for now? Basically you're standing, when you work with your clients, you send a question to the universe and you're waiting to receive an answer? If I'm working with clients, I'm in a receptive mode. I'm aligned and in a receptive mode. And then I will get the answers or the, the information, which points are important. So for example, if I will work with you on the project, the house project, we first of all, we check is this an important or just noisy. And then all noisy ones are pushed away. And then we care about the important points. And often there is not, it's a point behind your sentence. And then we go deeper and deeper to the really reason. And then we are on the root, you said before, and we care, up, we care about the root. And then it's a, clear, a clarifying and a healing at, at this point. And then you get clear if your dream is a real dream or it's a byproduct of a different dream, maybe, or something else. Maybe you want a goal, but you're really avoiding the goal. People say, oh, if I win this award, I'll be happy. How about we just work on happiness? And then maybe the award will come afterwards, but work on happiness first. Yeah. No. And often it's also that they came with this special wish or desire, and then we are working on it. And then we can we see, oh, the truth is the wish means da da da. So you can wish this directly. You don't have to get this. So sometimes it's on a deeper level that the truth desire. So fine tune to the real core of your passion of what you want. Wow, wow. So before before we end, when we were on the boat. Ari was sharing with you, I think, one of his struggles with one of his parents or something. And you said he used a sentence. I think it was, how do I know? I don't remember exactly what. And you bought the word trust. Just trust. And by us, we believe it's the Hebrew word is emuna in God. We trust in God. And when it's in the midst of something really, really hard, like a test from God, like in our pain, it's called bitachon. It's like the next level of trust. It's trust within the adversity. Not only trust in theory, oh, when everything is good, I trust in God. It's when we're going through the adversity, we trust in God. And it's fascinating that you use the word. You said, Ari, replace the word with trust. That was something that he was working on so hard with the Hebrew word, the Muna. He's like, I have to get stronger with that, like with the Muna, with trust. And then you, I said to you, so what, is, what does that mean? You said, okay, don't bring the negative, replace the negative with a positive. I want to leave the audience with two simple examples of things that you see that come up with clients a lot, like rumble with their mind. And you say, instead of using this, it's the same thing. It's the same sentence, just with the positive. Can you give me one or two examples of switching words around, switching sentences? Yes. One of the most famous is don't use don't and not. So say it active and positive. Active and positive. Yes. 
for example, don't fall down, keep staying or keep holding is the positive way. So instead of saying, I hope I don't fall down, yes. you could, can you use the word hope? Or may, yes, hope. Or maybe I hope I don't get a disease. So I want to stay healthy. So not using hope in the positive. So you could say, instead of, I hope I don't get a disease. I hope I don't get sick. I hope I don't sleep late. Can you say, I hope I wake up on time. I hope, can you use hope in the positive also? Yes. I hope I stay healthy. I hope I win this contest. I hope I succeed in my mission. That's it. And much more powerful is I am. So I'm successful. I'm happy. Not I'm hope. I hope to be happy. I'm happy. But what if somebody doesn't believe that they're happy? I work with people that are struggling with sadness and grief, depression, pain, loss a lot. Those are like my clientele usually are the ones or people that are listening or that are going through a tremendous amount of pain. So to say I'm happy when I'm extremely sad and some, let's say somebody passed away or somebody lost somebody or there's a, tra a, a tragedy that could be not physical and they're going through like they were, let's say somebody was diagnosed with a mental illness or something like that. Hope is a really good and powerful word. You can use it, of course. If it's possible, use, use a sentence without hope and already the final feeling or goal you want to achieve, then it's better. But if it's not possible, then use the word hope. That's fine. But if it's possible... If you're not feeling resistant, ask yourself, are you feeling resistant? I once spoke to a neuroscientist and she said to me, affirmations can be tricky. When you're not feeling it, it can resist if it feels like a lie. So you could say, I want to want to be happy. I want to want to get married. I want to want to find my right job. I want to want to do the work with healing. Or maybe just let me see if it would be possible for me. Or maybe I allow me to think it would be possible. Then it's all also a door opening. So the opportunity is a little bit, there's a chance for this opportunity. And it's you don't have to believe it, but you are not in resistance to it. You feel the difference? Mm. Yeah. So it has to feel, it has to feel right with you. Yes, yes. So you said don't use the don'ts. <laughs> don't do the don'ts, yes. <laughs> so how would you do that in a positive, don't do the don'ts? Oh, this needs a little practice, but I I do it so many years and sometimes it happens, but it's really a kind of practice. So for example, I don't want to be late. I will be on time. And Another example is, um, you, uh, I don't think about it. So, I have a so natural, your mind is already yes. rewired yes, to, that's it. to thinking this way, to attracting the world these ways. Do you still have moments that you go into the negative way of words or not? You're so programmed already that you don't. Yes, it happens sometimes, but it feels so uncomfortable for me. My system is like an alert, then I recognize and then, oh, and then I change it. And in my family, we have a running gag because if I make a mistake, <laughs> so-called, we use <laughs> like a storm or like to... <laughs> <laughs> an alarm. A and little an alarm. alarm. <laughs> not only an alarm, it's like cleaning a board. So <laughs> it's a funny noise and... Everyone in my family is already using it. If somebody says something, and everyone, oh no, don't say this. And then you just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you already delete, kind of delete. Yeah, wow. It's fascinating what happens once we clear our pathways of energy. It's just amazing. So I often say that there's a very strong responsibility. I feel responsibility with my frequency because I'm on a high frequency. I know I'm on a high frequency because 
I get knowledge through dreams and when I see people, but I get a lot of information through dreams. And a lot, since I'm little, people used to say, don't dream about me unless I'm winning the lottery or marrying my dream person because my dreams would come true. I would sometimes be afraid to tell dreams if they were not good because I was, I knew that there were information. And when I was not well 13 years ago, one of the things that I told my healer, I'm like, disconnect me. I need to disconnect for now. I'm so connected that I am walking around and feeling everybody's vibration so strong that it's depleting me. I need, and I needed to work on my energy on such a deep level of healing that I needed to be disconnected. He said, but listen, once you disconnect, it takes a long time to connect back. I said, I don't care. I need to disconnect because I can't survive. I can't survive now. I went into a Walmart and I had a panic attack right away when I walked in because right away I saw people's energy and it was over, it was attacking me. And I had a, an anxiety, a panic attack because of it. But this is a really wonderful example. You asked, your thought was, I have to disconnect me. And in, at this point, there were, would be my recommendation. What could you ask for that you are strong enough or safe enough? That you're not losing something in order to gain something. Make me stronger so I can feel. Instead of disconnecting. I stay connected. And what will I need to be to handle this and to be in daily life, with my openness, with my connection, with all the informations I will get. And I'm safe. I'm sure this would be my question in this moment. So it doesn't have to be a sacrifice. It could be something we can gain without a sacrifice. Wow. Thank you so much for uh, explaining this to me. And I probably like just touched the, as much as I love that working with energy and tapping into it. There's so much that we could still work with. I always say to Ari, my husband, everything is energy. We know everything is energy and we prove it with sound when there's a big explosion. Why does our house shake or when there's loud music, there's vibration, right? And when the opera, they say that you can shatter the glass because there's an energy so we know that everything is energy and to connect to source you need energy you really have to connect to the source within us of the godliness within ourselves but what if it's like i always wonder what if the energy gap is so big and you keep on working on your energy but you're still light years light years even if you live till 500 years you won't be able to connect to the high level of the energy in order to shift certain things within your life or patterns or whatever it is, whatever you want to change within your life. Is it light years away or is it very, is very close? It's what you believe. So if it's, if you think it's possible in the next second, <laughs> then it could be this. Uh, and now we are talking about time. Time is just a construct. You don't have to, it's useful on the human level, but on the higher dimensions, you don't care about time. So you're saying you can go straight to the core. You don't need a lot of time to practice it in order to get to the highest level of energy. I, I would say you are on the highest level, but you are not conscious about it. So it's, it's therefore you're rising your consciousness, but not your inner being, you're already there. Mm. It's not that it takes a long time. It's the awareness. Yes. It's the awareness. Wow. Giselle, to wrap up, I, I want to first thank you so much and thank God for connecting us because, wow, if I wouldn't take that boat to that exact stop, if we wouldn't change our itinerary, we would never meet you. And if that lady wasn't in the booth, yeah, if she was in the booth and not outside releasing a boat, we would have never met because I would never ask you when the next boat is. And we would never. This is energy. The fact that how we met is because we attracted each other. We just attracted our energies, attracted each other. And this is how it happens. 
what is one sentence or words of inspiration that you want to leave the audience with to ponder when they're like, when this is very new to them, what would you give them something to think about that they can ponder about in their own personal journey when it comes to thoughts, words, vibration? What can I do right now to love this moment, to be in love with this moment, whatever it be, would it be sunshine, cloudy, rain, are you happy or maybe a challenging moment? Ask yourself, what can I do right now to love, to fall in love with this moment? Mm. To live the now, the power of now. That's it. Wow. And then the door is open and it's, the door is open to the power of now. And the power is the energy and the energy, that's you. You want to hear something funny? <laughs> I'm going to read out to you. My mentor that helped me with his podcast, her name is Heather Parody, and everybody knows her. So she asked me what my favorite sentence is. She quoted her favorite sentence. And she said, what's your favorite sentence? Quote. And I answered her in an email right before I met you, right before I, we met today on this Zoom call. And I responded to her that I have a lot of favorite quotes. This is from Eckhart Tolle, that I use it, and I use it very often. Realize deeply that the present moment is all you have. Make the now the primary forces of your life. Is that it? That's the truth. <laughs> yeah. I mean, That's like true. that, I said to her, and I live by this because... It's constantly bringing me back to center, the now. So what, what's now? What, right, right now is a good moment. This is a good moment. Right now is good. How can I, do I need to elevate it? Do I need to, do I need to shift something out of this now to make it better? What, what is getting me stuck from falling in love with the now? And it's, and it's work. Yes. And right now it's love informed from whatever it be, it's love. And maybe you can't see it right now, but if you ask yourself, what can I do to fall in love with this? You're open to the love. It's already there. And then you will be connected to it. What if people say, I don't know what, I, now is so miserable, I can't fall in love with it. I know that I, there are going to be a lot of people listening to it that they're going to say, I can't fall in love with it now. I don't want to fall in love with it now. It's so miserable. Yes, that's very, that's a, yet you make a shift. I don't want to fall in love. And that's, a, that's okay. And if you, the okay, not to fall in love with it, but maybe ask, how can I fall in love with the now? Then there will be a shift. Yeah. You have to want it. I always say that the healing starts when you say, I no longer want to be here. I don't know how I'm going to leave the here. And I don't know how I'm going to get to something else. But you need to say, I am no longer willing to stay in the now, in the way it is, the way the, in the way the now is, the way I'm experiencing it. And the shift happens when you accept that you're no longer want to be in this position. So how do I get? To you made a decision. Yeah. To accept and also accept this is the way it is now. This is the way it is. Radical acceptance. So you accept it. But I am no longer wanting to be in the way I'm feeling now and the anxiety and the depression and the grief and the pain and the resentment and all these emotions, right? Yes. Yeah. And how can I make the now a better place? What are we doing for ourselves? What do we want to be? What do we want to work on? What's important to us? How can we cultivate these small changes in our brain, in our day-to-day -day life with our own tools? I call working with me the VIP program because I handhold you through the process. And sometimes the process is very lonely and hard and frustrating. And you want to just make sure you get it right to guide you through it with somebody that went through it. Sometimes you need a therapist, a psychiatrist, a coach, and somebody like me, somebody that went through the same thing, the same 
same challenge as I did. And I love working with people that are ready to do the work because it is expensive. It's a lifelong investment into yourself, into your future. When you start working with a therapist, with a coach or with someone like me, you're investing into your long-term stability, into your long-term mental health. People often ask me, can I work with you? How many times? What does it look like? And I say, it's not about how many times. What are you willing to do to show up, to work on yourself, to make the changes? How ready are you? Because if you're not ready, the investment will go south. You could say, I don't know where I want to go. I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't even believe it can, but I'm no longer willing to stay in this position where I am now. Choose yourself. What are you willing to do to bring awareness to yourself, to your mental health, to your stability, to change? How are you going to impact yourself that you will impact the world? If you want to work one-on-one with me, link is in the show notes. Happy to answer any questions that you have. One-on-one with Matana. Schedule a free 30-minute consultation that we can see if you are ready. Be ready for change. Be ready to work hard. Be ready to see... a different you. Giselle, how do people reach out to you if they want to start working on their mind and their words and the power and manifesting the best version of themselves? So how do they find you? Best way at the moment is my profile on Facebook, Giselle Van Lux. There you will find me. We will put a link in the show notes, Giselle Van Lux. I love that. I love how it sounds. It really sounds amazing. And and Lux means it's the light. So it's the connection to your life. Is that your real name? No, this is my energetic anchor. Oh, okay, fine. Okay. So it's not your family name. Not, not my family name, no. <laughs> okay, okay. So Giselle Van Lux, we're going to put a link in the show notes, how you can reach out. So go through Facebook. Do you have an email address that you like sharing? Yes, it's Giselle van Lux at web.de for Germany. Okay, and we're going to put that also in the show notes. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for sharing your light, your talents, your words of wisdom, your wisdom, and your positive energy with the world. And you really transform lives. So you're on a big mission and God chose you. you. God chose you to do a big mission. And I'm inspired by you. So thank you. Thank you so much. It's a great honor to be here with you. Bye till next time. Thank you for listening till the end. We highly appreciate all of our listeners. In Mental Health Together is better. You being here means a tremendous amount to us. If you enjoyed this episode and you would like some extra boost of information and inspiration that is not on the podcast, you can go to our website, hopetorecharge.com. There's some premium content that for the cost of a cup of coffee, you can download some amazing information that will help you, a tool that will guide you through life. So So don't skip a beat. Don't hesitate. Go to hopetorecharge.com and see what other offerings we have there for your mental health well-being. Thank you for joining us. And remember, if you enjoyed this and you want to say thank you, the best way of gratitude will be by you leaving a review or a comment or sharing this with a loved one. There is no greater form of gratitude for us. Thank you. Bye till next time. Looking to reduce your anxiety and stress, relax your muscles, or get a better night's sleep? Check out Maxifies.com, 100% legal hemp, where you can find doctor-formulated, lab-certified, high-quality CBD oils, tinctures, and other items, cultivated, grown, harvested, and packaged in the United States, and available in different sizes and strength formulas. Check out Maxifies.com, that's M-A-X-I-F-Y-Z.com, and use coupon code HOPE to get 10% off your order, plus free shipping. That's Maxifies.com.